Hi everyone, my name is uh, Henrik Schwarz and today we are reading in between the lines uh, my new remix for uh, Jeff featuring uh, Josh Milan. Uh, the track is called Difficult and um, Josh Milan is a fantastic legendary singer, founder of Blaze and when they asked me to do it I was immediately excited um, to try something and um, I want to show you today what I made out of it. Um, so here's the Ableton Live session. And um, I might want to start with, um, we just take a look at the beats, uh, or I'll just play a little bit of the track so you know what I'm talking about. So what I do a lot is um, when I get remixes, um, I listen to all the stems and um, and see what actually I want to use and um, um, and sometimes it's just uh, the vocal that um, ends up being in the remix and that's also the same thing here. So so I started listening to this and. Um, started thinking what Tell me would be what you're an interesting line I don't wanna read and what I usually do mind. is um, I, I, I get inspired by um, new plugins or new hardware synthesizers um, um, that I just get and then I step through the sounds and um, hopefully find something that, that strikes my ear and, and then I start playing around with it and so when I started working on this remix, um, I just got this um, mini Moog here, uh, memory Moog, sorry, memory Moog, and um, my friend Frank, um, he has a real one. So I, I know that this is something, it's very difficult to capture the sound of the original thing. And um, there's many plugins out there who who pretend to be something and um, but when I got this one I, I really thought this is a very very strong sound and and that's actually what I'm expecting from from a plug-in or instrument I, I want to start playing and, and get inspired to make music and and with this one um, I was very impressed about how they how well it, how great it sounded and um, and so it's easy um, so if you just it's very strong and so I came up um, with this line tell me what you're thinking I don't want to read your mind I know we had our problems that people go through all the time if only you would talk to me and start trying to win this fight I would like our healing before I kiss you good night and now you can see um, frequencies moving uh, cutoff frequencies moving uh, let's have a look at that because that's what I usually do a lot um, to put some extra energy into um, a performance so I listen to the vocal and I didn't just sit here with one of the controllers usually this one here um, my icon um, I just root one of the MIDI um, controllers to cut off or maybe I might use one of the Arturia um, and then I just play and record and then I see what comes out Love you. Ah. 
So let's take a look at um, this channel. Here's the plugin. Um, I think there is some automation on the node length also somewhere. Let me see. Ah, yeah, in the very beginning, um, we have very short notes. Yeah. Tell me what you're thinking. I don't want to read your mind. And um, usually I would have um, an EQ after the synth to get it under control, um, which I don't have here. Um, I don't know why, um, but there's an L2 Tell me what just to um, cut I don't want the highest your um, mind. volumes. And then it goes into one of my favorite hardware tools, um, is uh, the Culture Voucher. Um, and um, we might take a look at that one later. Um, and uh, I use it as a plugin, so all the hardware that is in my studio is um, rooted in a way so I can use it as if it was a plugin. So I just, I just drop it in there, and um, I have many others here. Um, so this is all my hardware, and um, so whatever I think is the right thing now, I would drop it in and, uh, and it's there. Um, and I usually play with the volumes here instead of walking to the, to the um, machine, um, because I usually work on, on different projects at the same time. And uh, so when I open up something else, I, I want all the knobs in the same position. And I would usually um, only play with volumes because what I do with all the hardware is I use them as colors. So um, I know exactly they are in a special setting and I know exactly what I want from them. And, um, and when I want that color, I would use it and then play with the volume. And then sometimes I would adjust, but just a little bit. Um, so I know what's happening. Um, okay, so I added, let's listen to this in solo. So here you get some nice harmonic overtones. It's not much, but um, it's adding a nice touch. Um, so then we have a kick drum coming from the side chain. Not much as well. And then um, I also have the vocals on the side chain because um, then they get more space. So when I I usually do that quite a lot. You're gonna when we go through all the stems, we see that this combination I use a lot um, because I want the vocal to be very strong. So, so all the stems would make room whenever uh, Josh is singing. And uh, so then I have. Um, Ah, yeah, look at this here. That's surprising. I would normally have that earlier. Um, Tell me what because this is what you see a lot in plugins and also hardware since there's always a lot of rumble going on. Um, sometimes it's going really, really high. And uh, once you get rid of this, you get so much more space in dynamics and um, um, and I usually do that on every track because it's nearly everywhere it's necessary. Um, and so for that I, I use a combination of two plugins, uh, uh, two EQ plugins. It's um, it's the Waves um, HEQ and uh, the Fab Filter. And from Fab Filter I might even use the Pro uh, Q1, uh, which is still available available from their website, because I think it's for me this is still the the cleanest sounding, very very precise um, um, EQ um, that I like a lot. And um, but it doesn't have all the dynamic features that uh, the new versions have. So um, so some EQ here. Um, I use the low cut from H EQ. EQ um, very often I use the AGQ when I want to um, add a lot of EQ or remove a lot and I, I might use the Pro Q to do tiny little precise 
changes. Um, but also on the Pro, uh, on the HEQ, I would mostly use the digital setting instead of the coloring because I I, I don't really um, how would I say it adds a lot of processing to the signal and I, I want to have the signal as um, as um, unprocessed as possible um, and that's also why I switch all the bands off that I don't use and uh, I do this on, on usually I do this on every stem um, okay so that's this one tell me what you're thinking what do we have here okay um, so this is an audio stem of uh, that first one because I think at some point I ran out of processing power um, so I had to bounce it down um, including all the EQ and stuff so this is um, this is an audio version of this one okay now to uh, the drums this kick down drum I took from my um, what is it called 809 uh, modular I'm gonna show you later um, sounds like this and then I added um, pretty pure I just added a little echo boy so we get some movement this is without and then I added um, some very low tonal um, uh, synth it's a very short uh, no that's not the one here it's like something like an additional that gives some more tone um, to the kick drum what did I do here ah nothing maybe I just took a look um, at the spectrum to make sure there's no rumbling um, that would mess up the whole mix if there would be something going on here I would have cut it away and so I'm using this a lot um, to take a look at this at the spectrum um, but we could switch it off so then we have some drum uh, toms again not much here um, L2 again to cut the highest peaks the kick drum is side chaining the signal and then we have an HEQ again with a low cut and some adjustments on the highs okay hi-hats um, this is what I do a lot um, I might drop um, a drum loop into Ableton's simpler and then I just start playing around with it I think many people do that it's nothing very special but but I think it's it's giving you a very nice very um, um, I usually put the the velocity pretty high because then the boring loop starts to become really really interesting and you can find many 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 different sounds and so while the kick drum is running I would start playing on the keyboard and, and find interesting an interesting hi-hat loop here I added some more and everything together sounds like this And all the drums together, they're gonna end up here. Um, touch of compression with uh, Waves API. And just a little bit of EQ. To 
glue everything together. And then there is, um, what else I have? Here. The solo comes from the mini uh, memory mode again. And then I have uh, Arturia CS80. There's a lot of EQ on this one, I think. Yeah. And then here again, um, when all this is done, um, it goes to track my two um, hardware track ones um, because I know they add in this setting that I have. They they add highs, they compress nicely, and also I use hardware very often to. What I would say, I try to heal the sound um, because when it's when the when the source is digital, I kind of miss I miss the physical impact. I mean, this sounds okay, but um, it's getting very esoteric at this point because um, um, I like when there is a physical addition when when it's not just virtual, and this is why I send many of the signals to an external hardware so they so so things start moving uh, something is moving um and then it comes back and because i believe that that um it's gonna it's gonna resonate better with you as a human being um if if there was actually something physical moving um and um so I, i'm trying to bring together the best of both worlds. So I, I have this um, CS80, which I really like in the uh, latest version. Good one. And um, many great sounds. And um, I can't afford a real one, so um, I have to go for this. And then with a little bit of EQ and especially with some um, real machine processing the signal at the end um, or somewhere in the change, it, does, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think it, for me it sounds, it has impact and that's what it's about. Um, so this without. And this is with. It somehow changes the physical balance in a weird way. So, um, because a, like a, a, a signal that I would believe, it has a very, very certain balance between bass and treble. So it feels like a physical, physical body, and, and that's what I, what I try to make. Okay, that brings me to my favorite plugin ever. <laughs> I use it since version one. It's uh, Melodyne, and uh, when 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 it was released, I couldn't believe this was physically possible to um, change the pitch uh, or change yeah change the pitch without changing the sound. And then they even went into you could change the chord uh, into a different chord. And uh, so I I still today this is my my favorite tool i use it a lot um but maybe not to not much to tune things but to 
to put things into another harmonic environment or, or just make it sound really different. And, uh, and especially for remixing. So you, you can take anything and put it anywhere. So this is, for me, this is the ultimate, um, the ultimate thing, um, because you, yeah, it's very open. Um, so that just on a side note, and then maybe a quick word about effects, because also here, um, I, I use, um, here's a Lexicon PCM 90 and, um, I'm using the, the Lexicon plugins. They are good. Uh, I mean, they're great, but the original hardware just sounds incredible to me um, because it adds a, another dimension. And, and from what I feel, you can't, you can't get that dimension with, with a plugin. Um, and um, that doesn't mean one thing is better than the other, but, but for me, um, this PCM90, I use it all the time. And, um, and it's somewhere in the rack over there, we can take a look. Um, so what I made is I made a, a max for live plugin that just holds all the presets. And um, so whenever I open something, it sends the preset to the, to the uh, unit. And, and so I have, don't have to do anything. Um, so, and I have that quite a lot with my hardware. So I have like these tiny little helpers. I have a controller for the Matrix 1000 and, um, and, and they just, I have them there and once I drop them in, they do something. So for example, I drop the, um, yeah, SSL Fusion on. And so now, yeah, it's, it's going to my network and now you hear it clicking um, and the, the, the thing goes on um, just to make sure um, everything's where it should be. Um, I probably forgot a lot. <laughs> um, if you want to know more, um, please ask the questions. I'm going to answer them if I, if I can. Um, yeah, looking forward to hear your comments. Um, and uh, I hope I see you somewhere soon.